It's the Muskegon Channel. It is Andy O'Reilly and Dave Cackley on the day after the 45th birthday yeah. of Dave Cackley. Looking like a new, wiser, and, and more uh, more planted, I think. Yes. yes. More He's, experienced. More experienced. He's got a little, got a little more... Uh... You got nothing, did you? <laughs> I didn't. I don't know. Not at all. <laughs> I took a nap in a hammock yeah. and slept and slept through dinner. Did you really? Yeah, and then I took I took a walk through the cemetery. Ooh, and that was fun. That that really gives you it, it centers you. It kind of gives you perspective. It's very peaceful. Did you? Pick I enjoy out a plot I enjoy cemeteries. So <laughs> What's that? Did you pick that? out a plot because you're so old? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I'd like to be buried right underneath this tree. Yeah. That way I can reflect uh, when I take my long nap. <laughs> So, did you get any good birthday presents or anything? Uh, I got some cash. Uh, I got my wait, son. Wait a minute, it wait made a minute. me a or. Wait a minute. A or, what? S- somebody gave you money for your birthday? Yeah, there, that's the best gift. <laughs> and I got a lot of uh, a lot of just happy birthday greetings on Facebook. A lot of phone calls. Yeah. Some text messages. Yeah. That was nice. You got birthday money? Yeah. It's you know it doesn't. My mom gives everybody birthday money. She does. That's just what all our kids get cash. Yeah? Yeah, that's, how much that's we, what... How much are we talking here? $10? <laughs> I'm not... You don't, you don't talk about how much a gift is, especially if the gift is money. Yeah, you should talk about it. I don't talk about that. You should talk that's about not, it because everybody wants to know. How much did you get? That's uncouth. If you guess, I'll tell you. Uh, all right, I'm going to guess it was $10 and your card had a monkey on it. <laughs> no, you're wrong. No. All right, let me guess again. Let me guess again. Your car, your you got ten dollars, and your card was Mickey Mouse. It was over ten, less than ten thousand. Whoa! No, it wasn't that. Come on, little profit sharing going on. No, Those no, no, countertops. No, no, no must be the thing. season. It's not is even good. close to that. People need kitchen cabinets. Call People, the cabinets. Yeah, that business is good over there. <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> what so, did, did she give you? Twenty dollars. And was there a moose on your card? It was. It was. It was in the vicinity. It was in the vicinity of, of that. Of it twenty? Was, okay, fine. It was fifty bucks. You got fifty bucks from your mom. Fifty bucks. Oh, isn't that nice, day? That was sweet. Yeah. Fifty. Like, yeah. Well, nice. Do your brothers and sisters right. get the same amount, or are you? Yeah. Well, actually, my my I think my sister just celebrated her fortieth, and she got forty dollars. I think. Oh. I'm not sure. Oh well. Okay. Because so I, so my mom loves me ten dollars more. <laughs> Does your That's sister live at home too? No. Oh, well, I just I don't know. <laughs> okay, you know, no. I'm the only one who loves my mom enough. Oh, is that what it is? Back in. That's how yeah. you claim squatters' rights, kids, right there. Pay attention. <laughs> what do we got going on in the news? You know, honestly, before you get into it, yeah. After the headlines late yesterday afternoon about the senators all getting called to um, the White House for a briefing. Yes, That's, That's my first story. I thought we were going to wake up with a certain. Uh, Polynesian country in, in ashes this morning. <laughs> I really did. I, I thought they were uh, done. Guess we'll have well, to wait and see. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's get right into it. Right. Uh, the entire U.S. Senate has been invited to the White House later this week for a briefing on North Korea. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer confirmed the briefing for all 100 senators on Monday. The briefing is scheduled for Wednesday with the Secretary of State, Defense, as well as the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs and Director of National Intelligence providing an update to lawmakers. Now, this almost never happens. No. Very rarely is the entire Senate invited over to the White House. So th- yep. that's when, you know, big things are going on. Some things that kind of slipped through the cracks over the weekend, uh, North Korea's oil and gas supplies last weekend, they were basically cut off. China cut them off to Good. a large extent, and that jacked up the gas prices over there by 85%. Also, China froze and disabled all Chinese ATMs in their country. Wow. That is where you're thinking uh, something serious could be afoot. I don't think it's going to come to it. I think North Korea is going to back down. They have to, or, I mean, they're risking not being a country anymore, yeah, basically. Well, we'll I don't, I, it, but here's, here's, here's the thing. I mean, they, we don't know how close they are to a nuclear weapon. There are reports that by 2020 they could hit um, Seattle, mm. Washington, 
Uh, uh, but th- there were reports that they were two years close to a nuclear weapon a few years ago. So we don't know what they – we really don't know what they have because we haven't had inspectors in there. And I think it's, uh, I think it's important to say, too, and, and get, don't, don't take this the wrong way, but we've been wrong about what, what other countries have had as far as ordinance goes in the past. So right. I, I would much prefer to see something along the line of some kind of diplomatic resolution, but I don't think we're going to get that. I don't think you can. When you're dealing with crazy people, oh, he's not. There, there's, uh, there, there is no diplomacy when you're de- dealing with crazy people. Nope. See, that's nuts. what's scary because you don't know. This guy's backed into a corner. You don't know what could happen. Yeah. Nope. So we kind of that that kind of overshadowed everything else that happened. But other things that did occur yesterday, uh, New Orleans removed the first of four prominent Confederate monuments early Monday morning, the latest southern city to sever itself from symbols viewed by many as representations of racism and white supremacy. Now, the Liberty Monument, which commemorates whites who tried to topple a biracial post-Civil War government, was taken down. How that was still up is a mystery, but it was taken down around 1 o'clock in the morning. Now, this was done to avoid disruption from monument supporters who reportedly made death threats to some city officials, statues to uh, Confederate General Robert E. Lee, uh, PGD Beauregard, and Confederate President Jefferson Davis will also be removed. So, you know, the Confederates, like, I mean, people, that that's controversial. I've always been uneasy with it because... I, mean, I was uneasy watching the Dukes of Hazard with the General Lee. It's like, what, what, I mean, I, I couldn't figure out. If, I didn't think the Dukes were racist. You were seven. You weren't uneasy. I was a little uneasy. I, I had seen Roots when I was seven. And oh, that, yeah. that, that really had a bad had – I'm serious. Watching Roots had a serious effect on me as a but kid. They didn't have the Roots – Roots didn't have a Confederate flag in it. No, no, but then, but then I also had had seen some other, some other stuff, and so I was. What you're a, trying to do is tie of... a bunch of stuff together when you really got nothing to say. No, on. no, I oh. do oh, seriously. Okay. I looked at the Confederate flag as I knew that was a symbol of the South during the Civil War, and I'm like, why would they still have that? And I understand that some don't view it as a as a symbol of of racism or white supremacy, but I, I get how you could. Based I, on the fact that it was the flag of the Confederate States. I look at it like this. History is history, good or bad. Right. I, I don't necessarily have to agree with uh, what we, and, and who would at this point? Who would agree with what that, you know, you know, slavery and all that stuff. Yeah. But those monuments, good or bad, they are part of the, they are part of what have made the United States what it is. And that. You know, what, what's next? Are we going to – because you look around the world and you see kind of some of the, the historic stuff that gets destroyed. And, you know, when we watch ISIS destroy a bunch of stuff in in some foreign land, everybody's sitting over here going, well, we got to protect world history and we got to do this, we got to do that. This is just part of our story, and I don't think it was right. I don't think it was anything to be proud of. I don't think that uh, – but but to, to start I, – I just – the disp- it's history. So you're, you're- your problem is it's like whitewashing history, pretending something didn't happen, so that's why we should keep them up. That's I, an interesting perspective. You know, um, yeah. I, I just I, – but, you know, hey, I'm, I also understand that uh, the majority wins. So if, if the populace yeah. of that area decides that that's something that they don't want there anymore, that's okay. I, I think the argument against what you're saying, I, and I, I see your side of the – I see your point. Yeah. <laughs> but the argument against that is you can – discuss what happened without basically having what what could be taken as a tribute to the atrocities of the past in the south and i see that too i'm I'm, you know what honestly i'm glad i don't have to be in the middle of it right (laughs) glad that was somewhere else not roosevelt park (laughs) see two two white guys can have a discussion about racism and all is well well no it's not and the, we've got so far to go on that stuff and it, it, honestly do we no oh. <laughs> do we have a really that far to go on race honestly oh yeah in in, in what way both both sides of the coin i the, i i feel it and i hate it i i don't like how we can't get along and how uh, uh there you know like I, I, it's just terrible. I can't believe we don't get along better. In, well, yeah, I mean, in 2017, there... we haven't figured out a way to accept people for who they are. We haven't figured out a way to 
cut, cut a lot of barriers. We haven't figured out a way to extend the hand to other. Uh, it's just it's appalling that the United States is what it is when it comes to to race issues. I see. I think we're better than we give ourselves credit for. Yeah. There, there, there are going to be individual racists. Okay. Bigotry that that coincides with ignorance are always going to be stupid racist, yeah. red, uh, racist people. Okay. Uh, but there are look at look at like as far as institutionalized. There, there is no institutional racism anymore. There are no institutions that have policies that are that are racist. There are the still be, around. What? Well, the yeah. That's the, that's. But that's not a, that's not a that's not an institution. You yes, consider it is. the Klan a government institution? I'm talking about no, like I'm not government, government institution, not at all. But you know, yeah. what's the government got to do with it? I'm well, talking about I'm people's talking about. hearts. Well, our our, our, the, the, our government is not involved in institutional racism. Is no. It? Now, 50, 60 years ago, it was. Yeah. We did have you know Jim Crow laws and that type of thing. Yeah. But we don't have that now. We have individual racists, and those are problems. But I think we we've come a long way. We need to appreciate that, and you know I you know take people individually instead of putting them into groups. Absolutely, you know blacks, whites, whatever. Be one. See, look, look at us. Look at us again, solving problems. Yes, we did. <laughs> Informing people and solving problems. All right, what else is going on? Uh, police in Royal Oak. This is crazy. Say a woman suspended of drunk driving, or driving drunk on a suspended license, had half a bottle of whiskey in her passenger seat when she was finally stopped. This following a 20-minute four-city chase. 50-year-old Satira M. Kitchen allegedly refused to stop following an apparent traffic violation. She proceeded through Ferndale, Detroit. Highland Park and Royal Oak at speeds ranging from 29 to 53 miles per hour. Officers had to blow out Kitchen's front tires with stop sticks. This is Kitchen's third offense for operating while intoxicated. Yeah, it was uh, probably a good idea to wait till she got to Royal Oak to pull her over. Why is that? Instead of instead of pulling her over in Detroit. Why? Because it's Detroit. Oh. I mean, wait till you get to Royal Oak. <laughs> no, we'll, all right, now we'll get out the stop sticks. I, I, Detroit's fine. I was just there a few weeks ago. Oh, you were yeah, okay. Which yeah. section of Detroit? Well, Comerica Park. Okay, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> there right. was a dog park there. There was a nice fountain going on. So what park. you're saying is Detroit is rising from the ashes? That's what I'm saying. Okay, hand in hand with Muskegon, we're building right. them both up. Okay, look there you go. Look at you. Oh, you just paused. Are you there? You froze up on me. You. Oh, there you are. Oh, hang on. Oh, there. Okay. Had a Skype stutter. <laughs> Wait a little. Yeah, we had a technical faux pas there. There we go. All right. Hey, speaking of Muskegon, a job fair in Muskegon will be held this Saturday in order to fill more than 200 positions along the lakeshore. It's scheduled from 9 a.m. to noon and 1 to 6 p.m. April 29th in the conference rooms at the Holiday Inn Muskegon Harbor on 3rd Street. Up to 220 seasonal and permanent positions are available. Staff is being sought for the Holiday Inn, 3rd Street Grill, Shoreline Inn, Lake House, a Waterfront Grill, and the Terrace Point Marina. So. Wow. Great opportunity to get yourself uh, some extra employment or, you know, maybe a full-time job. I have an idea uh, for you. I me? have an idea for you. This is what? a big one. What? You could go down there and you could get yourself a job as a cabin boy on some of the nice <laughs> ships here in town. Did a you cabin see, boy? Did you see the movie Cabin Boy? Yes, I did. You I saw it in the theater. Yeah, I know. Me too. You would fit in great doing that. Oh, yeah. You I could, would, Yes. Put a nice little uh, speedo on, and you can work on the deck. Coffee mm-hmm. to your me. What would you like? <laughs> <laughs> they can do good at that. Hey, you know who was in Cabin Boy? Uh, David Letterman had a cameo. Yes, he did. But who was one of the main characters? One of our one favorite of guys from the movies of all time. Andy Richter? No. Chris Elliott? No. Was the main character. Oh, are you talking to oh the guy who played? Yeah. The only, literally the only impression you can do. <laughs> Jimmy Gammon. <laughs> well, you right, can Jimmy do Gammon filler. He was awesome in Major League. <laughs> I can't do that one anymore, man. That killed oh, my dude, voice. That was, I love to hear you do it. It's, it's the oddest thing. The, literally, the only impression you can do, and it was spot on, was the guy who played the manager in Major League. That's right. Jimmy Gammon. That's... <laughs> oh, it kills my throat, man. Good God almighty. All right, sports. Uh, Tigers were off. They take on the Mariners tonight. 
Uh, Cubs beat up on the Pirates 14-3, to and it's the Bulls taking on the Celtics in Game 5 of their best-of-seven series. at uh, tied at two games apiece. That's sports. Hey, on Positively Muskegon today, we've got a great story that is about um, forgiveness and redemption. There's an organization called One Day with God, and what they do is they bring kids in to meet their, meet their fathers in prison, and they let them spend a whole day with these kids. Gosh. And it's it's a big, big deal, so check that out. And then on the uh, Muskegon Channel, we're talking a little bit about uh, the United Way. has got a big party coming up Thursday, and uh, they're going to kind of wrap up 2016, put mm-hmm. the movers and shakers in the spotlight, that type thing. I'll be there. Oh, very cool. Uh, that, oh, that... oh, and get this. We're breaking news here, folks. Dave and yeah. I are going to be live before too long in Muskegon. At That's Whit right. Buick. We will be out there at Whit Buick and uh, helping them out with an Ironman uh, giveaway type thing. Final game of the Ironman season is coming up at the L.C. Walker Arena, and that day of, we'll be at Whit Buick to uh, have a little fun with the Ironman. That's uh, May 13th. Isn't that a Saturday? Uh, yep. I think is it, is it the 13th. I, I don't have my calendar yeah, here. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a noon to 2, uh, May 13th at Whit Buick. Out there in Muskegon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Maybe That's 10 to a lot of fun. Maybe 10 to noon. I'm not sure. 10 to noon. Time, 10 we'll to noon. noon. Whenever they they need us, we'll be there. We'll be on the streets. Dave Cackley, go have yourself a nice Tuesday. See ya.